He said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. And then he went on. But Peter was still not agreeing. I pray we'll never argue with the Lord. That when the Lord is speaking, you'll pay attention. And don't deceive yourself to say you are so strong, you cannot be tempted. Why did Jesus teach us? Why did Jesus caution us to pray and lead us not into temptation? Hebrews chapter 2. But we thank the Lord. If we're willing to listen to the Lord, it will keep us in the time of temptation. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 18. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted, able to succor, able to sustain them that are tempted. What should we do then? We shall cry to the Lord in prayer. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. And for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like us. We are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. Come boldly to the throne of grace. That means come with confidence. Come with assurance. Come understanding and knowing that the Lord is going to give you all the grace you need. And he says, my grace is sufficient for you. Is the tempter knocking at the door? Run to the throne of grace. Is your, is your flesh wanting to give way to the temptation? Quickly run to the throne of grace. That's why it says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The Lord will help us. I said the Lord will help us. Now you know that God does not tempt any man, but often whatever he permits, sometimes, you know, the scripture will say, is the one that did it because he permitted it. Lead us not into temptation. That means do not permit us to be tempted above our strength of endurance. Do not permit unbearable trials that may lead to temptation to sin. Watch over us, that's a prayer, and watch to restrain and limit our trials, limit our affliction, limit anything that will test our virtue. That's a prayer. Preserve us from tears, from trial, from trouble, from temptation that may lead us astray. For this prayer to be answered, it must be preceded and followed by an earnest effort on our part to keep out of temptation. If you put yourself in the path of temptation, how can you tell the Lord at the same time to deliver you or to, not to lead you into temptation? That means then we cannot be praying a prayer like this that God will protect us if we ourselves put ourselves in the way of temptation. God is a loving God, a faithful Father. He will not allow us to be tempted above our strength. As trials and temptations come, He will give us sufficient grace, sufficient strength, sufficient power sufficient ability and will be able to overcome in jesus name we come to point number two matthew chapter 6 i'm reading verse 13 matthew chapter 6 verse 13 it says but deliver us from evil but deliver us from evil in the original language that's in the greek it means deliver us from the evil one deliver us from evil deliver us from the evil one to deliver from the evil one and from all evil is the prayer. Actually, the Lord was telling us this how to pray. That God will deliver us from Satan. He'll deliver us. Deliver us from his power. He will. He will. And deliver us from his snares. And deliver us from his words, his strategies, his plans. Deliver us from his evil plans. Deliver us from his agents. And deliver us from all the works of Satan. Satan is a great parent of all evil. And to be delivered from him is to be saved. This prayer, as you pray tonight, protection is for you. Yeah. And the Lord will preserve us in his kingdom in Jesus' name. Yeah. The petition is a prayer of deliverance from all evil of whatever kind. Not only from sin, but from all the consequences of sin. He'll deliver us fully and he'll deliver us finally. 
And uh, let, let's look at this prayer as we look at uh, Psalm 121. Psalm 121. We're looking at verse 7. Psalm 121. We're looking at verse 7. Psalm 121 verse 7, here is what the word of the Lord is telling us. It says, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. You know, if I were here, I would underline that verse of the Bible. Because the Lord is going to preserve you from evil, from every form of evil, from all evil. Evil that may come in the day or evil in the night or any time coming from Satan and from the agents of Satan, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. This salvation we have got, God will preserve it for us. And this joy of the Lord we have got, the Lord will preserve it for us. He has promised us heaven. He has taken us out of Egypt. And is leading us to the land of Canaan. And it's when he preserves us from all evil, then he'll take us to that promised land. In Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 21. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 21. I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. And I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. You know, because he has given the promise, that's why we can pray. Actually, this is the secret of effective praying. Prevailing prayer. You look at the promise of God and you match your prayer with the promise. Since he said, I will deliver you from all evil. I'll deliver you from the evil one. I'll deliver you from the wicked, the terrible one. Then you can say, oh Lord, I'm bringing your word to you. This is what you said. Let me show you the secret of praying. We're looking at Second Samuel chapter 7 verse 25. Second Samuel chapter 7. I'm telling you that you match your prayer with the promise of the Lord. Second Samuel chapter 7. And we're looking at verse 25. And now, O Lord God, the word that thou hast spoken. That's how to, that's how to pray. The word that thou hast spoken. It's like saying, the promise that you have given, the word that thou hast spoken concerning the servant and concerning his house, to establish it forever you as thou hast said. That's how to pray. This is a promise. The prayer is due as thou hast said. And do you remember when Jesus prayed for his own disciples? How did he pray for his disciples? We're looking at John chapter 17 verse 15. John chapter 17 verse 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. That's the prayer Jesus prayed. What did he pray? Prayer like that, of course, after dying for us. Going to the cross. Facing the cross and going to suffer for the salvation of his people. And after paying such a great price, he'll not want the devil to have it so easy to then draw us away from the kingdom. That's why he's saying, I'm getting them saved. I've gotten them saved. I've given them your word. And the world has hated them. They are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. This is a prayer I'm praying for them now. I'm not praying that you'll take them out of the world because they have evangelism to do in the world. I am praying that you'll keep them from the evil. And that prayer of Jesus will be answered on your behalf. In Galatians chapter, four, chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 4. Galatians chapter 1, verse 4. Who gave himself for our sins, that she might deliver us from this present evil world. He gave himself for us. He died on the cross of Calvary. He shed his blood for us. He paid the full price, the whole price, that she might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God our Father. Then we're told in him. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. We're looking at verse 14. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that has the power of death, that is the devil. He has destroyed his power. And to deliver them through, through fear of death, while all their lifetime subject unto bondage, for verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. 
And he tells us then in verse 18, for he in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, now is able, because of what he has done. And because of the privileged place the Father placed him, now is able to succor them that are tempted. He will, he will deliver us. First John chapter 5 verse 18. We know. What knowledge is this? We know. What assurance and confidence is this? We know. That whosoever is born of God sinneth not. Are you born again? The evidence is that you sin not. He that is born of God sinneth not. That's the verdict of heaven. That's the evidence on earth. That the assurance that you are born again, you are born of God, is that you sin not. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself keepeth himself that sh that wicked one toucheth him not you'll keep yourself and you know if we're going to be kept away from evil delivered from evil number one we must reject the root of all evil the root of all evil approach it throw it away that love of money the root of all evil throw it away you know, there are people that do evil. And you know why? Because of that root in their lives. They go to church. They read the Bible. But they love money so much. That because of that love of money, love of gain, unlawful gain, the root of evil is there. But if you approach that thing, then the devil will not have any string tied on you. Number two is to abstain from all appearance of evil abstain from all appearance of evil if you are praying deliver us from evil then you yourself number two you must abstain from all appearance of evil number three you beware of an evil heart of unbelieving departing from the living god you know the devil will try to say in that place of bible study is too far the devil will try to say that already you are late. If you go now, what are you going to meet? The devil will try to say, now you have to be wise economically when you spend money like this, like this, and you still spend money on transportation. The devil is trying to get you away from the living God. That's why it says, beware. Lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. And then you must be cleansed from an evil conscience. You must have poor. You must you must hate that which is evil you must depart from evil beware of evil workers beware of evil workers there are people that go from house to house maybe they come to this church too and they'll come and knock at your door do you believe everything you are hearing from the word of god do you think that is possible are we going to wait only for the lord to be led by the lord and you'll put some questions in your mind Beware of the evil workers. We're told in Job chapter 28, verse 28. Job 28, verse 28. And to man he said, Behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. To depart from evil, that's understanding. Proverbs chapter 4. In Proverbs chapter 4, reading from verse 23. Keep thine heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse leaves put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the paths of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Look at verse 27. Turn not to the right or to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Don't walk to a place where you know evil is waiting. The house of the former boyfriend, girlfriend. Remove your feet from evil. And then the gang you used to belong to. You know, the, the, the devil will say, are you not going to visit them? Are you not going to ask of so and so? You know, they'll draw you to evil. Remove thy foot from evil. 
Deuteronomy chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 13 from verse 1. If we want the Lord to keep us from evil, we have some responsibilities, some challenges that we need to get through. It says in Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 1. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and give us a sign or a wonder, the signs and lying wonders, they come up again, beware, be very careful, be watchful. And the sign of the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto you, unto this saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. And thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet, or that dream of dreams. For the Lord your God proves you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. Look at verse 5. And that prophet or that dream of dreams shall be put to death. What it means is count him as dead. Don't visit him again. Remove your foot away from his house. You hear the word of God, you pray, you make your decision, you make your consecration. And then he wants to turn you away from following after righteousness and holiness. He says, just count him as dead. Of course, you know he's dead in sins and trespasses. You know he's a dead man spiritually. Count him like that. And then it says, because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way, which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. Listen to this, so shall thou put evil away. Drive the false prophet away, and so shall thou put evil away. Drive that dream of dreams away from you. Don't come to my house again. Don't come here again to tell me something like this. Drive him away so that you'll be delivered totally from evil. So shall thou put evil away from the midst of thee. I pray the Lord will help every one of us in Jesus' name. If we truly desire to be delivered and protected from evil, we shall not hide any evil sin. In our heart, in our house, in our family, in our church. Believers are confident that God will deliver them from evil because of his love, because of his promises of deliverance and because of the prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray in line with the Lord Jesus Christ that God will keep us from the evil one. He will keep us from the world. He will keep us from the danger that the evil one is trying to bring our way. The Lord will preserve us unto the eternal kingdom in Jesus' name. We come to point number three now. Preeminence, the preeminence of the eternal and his overall triumph. The preeminence of the eternal and his overall triumph. We come to Matthew chapter 6 verse 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And now we think about this God who we are praying to. It says, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. How long? Forever. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. That's the Lord's prayer. It begins with God. It ends with God. This Lord's prayer. In this Lord's prayer, the Lord is declared to be a father whose name is to be hallowed and honored and exalted. He is king whose kingdom will rule over all. And he is Lord whose will will be done universally and eternally. And now at the end of the prayer is the preeminent one having all authority and all power and all glory of the everlasting kingdom. Now, what Jesus, how Jesus ended the prayer. Thine is the kingdom and thine is the power and thine is the glory forever. In First Chronicles chapter 29 verse 11. First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 11. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. And to think that this God 
with such great power, majesty, exaltation. It's your own heavenly father. And you can come to him anytime. What a privilege we have as children of God.